so why am I doing this uh, presentation? Sorry, my name is Andy Turner. I work for EPCC, and I also work in the Archer um, CSE team. So why do I think that doing a webinar on Bash would be useful to people? Well, I use Bash quite a lot for very diff lots of different tasks, from benchmarking and profiling on Archer to general day-to-day -day file uh, keeping and household sort of uh, householding activities. And there's quite a lot of good features, I think, that maybe people aren't aware of, or you've used uh, Born Shell before, and not been aware of features that you can use in Bash. And also, I thought it'd be interesting if some of you guys have features that I don't mention here, I'd be interested to hear, because there's always something new to learn in Bash, and there's a lot of powerful features. So I'm going to go through, um, I'm sorry, there's a couple of slides on Creative Commons, and we're using, you're welcome to take these slides and reuse them in presentation or for generating your own courses and things like that, as long as you give due credit. Um, and this is the sort of logo zoo that's obligatory you know, to say who funded um, our, the Archer project where these this sort of activities being funded on. So the sort of stuff I'm going to look at, I'm going to do quickly a couple of slides on basic stuff, just for people who aren't overly familiar with um, shell scripting syntax, just to give them an idea of what, shit, what the basic shell scripting syntax looks like, so that you don't get lost in the later slides when we look at um, the more interesting stuff, I guess. Um, then I'll have a quick look at um, arithmetic in Bash, search and replacing strings, um, some default, some uh, setting default values for variables, um, flow control, for loops, and if statements, um, arrays, and Bash arrays, printf, and um, a quick slide at the end on xargs. And then I also have a quick sort of example script at the end to show you where, you where you might use some of these things in practice. So why talk about it a bit more? Well, everyone on Archer writes shell scripts for job submission, okay, just about. So whenever you submit a job on Archer, whether you knew it or not, you're writing um, a shell script, and it's almost always Bash on Archer. And I know there are a few communities in particular that use um, Corn Shell, but a lot of the Bash features um, actually came from Corn Shell in the first place. So most of the things that I'm talking about here um, will work under K-Shell as well. Um, it's extremely useful for file manipulation and automation, which as I mentioned at the start, and more and more people are having to deal with this as the data volumes, the number of files increase, people are in bigger simulations, accumulating more and more data, and need to have a way to manipulate files, not in a manual sense anymore, but automatically at the end of the job. So for example, at the end of each job, you might uh, generate a large number of files, a large amount of data, but rather than having thousands of files, which make it very difficult to manipulate on a file system, you might want to condense these all into, say, one tar archive and move them, say, to the RDF automatically, check that your tar and copy process has been successful, and then remove the files um, on work on Archer to free up space for the next simulation of these sort of things. These are the sort of things that Bash can automate very well. Um, also, um, Scripting in C shell and TC shell is, in inverted commas here, but considered harmful. There's a famous blog post um, or uh, sort of Usenet post about why you should not script in C shell or TC shell. And there's various reasons why not. You can read that incredibly lengthy and overly detailed post about why not to do it in C shell. And actually, one of the major reasons for me, I think, is that the bash syntax is a lot clearer and easier to understand than things like C shell and TC shell um, when you're writing scripts. So as soon as you're writing something that's a bit more complicated, uh, then actually having something understandable and readable becomes a major consideration in the same way it does for any programming language. Um, familiarity with the BAS, more advanced Bash features or features you may not have known about actually gives you ideas of the sort of things you can use Bash for and gives you ideas for automation that perhaps you haven't thought about before. So, Playing around with Bash and familiarising yourself with it um, can be very useful and very productive on um, systems such as Archer. So here's my first of my basic stuff slides. Talking about variables and how you assign variables and how you refer to them. So you can see um, I'm with the pointer here. This top uh, section here is just simple uh, variable assignment. Essentially, you just pick a name. Um, use a equal sign and assign a variable. If your variable has spaces in it, then 
you have to include it in some sort of uh, delimiters here. Um, I'm using quotes, but you can also use inverted commas. Um, or if it doesn't have a space in it, you can just have the raw variable itself. Bash doesn't have any sort of typing in its variables. It, essentially, they are just interpreted based on how you use them. Okay. So when you refer to variables, I, I guess the other thing to, that may be different from Bash and other languages such as Python or things like that you used to is you can't have spaces inside the equals sign. Yeah, they have to be you know, next to each other. Then when you refer to variables, you might have you just use the dollar sign once to indicate the variable. And in this case, echoes just prints back to standard out. And if you put it in, in uh, quotes, then the uh, dollar is interpreted. So you get the output of the contents of the variable. If you put it in inverted commas, then actually all you get, everything's in, uh, interpreted literally by bash. So there's no expansion of the variable in there. Now you can also um, capture into a variable the results of a, another command. So say I wanted to capture um, the results of this echo command into another variable called result. I just put dollar and then put normal parenthesis around it in this way and get the value of the variable and store it. And bash, had, because it's based on Linux and Unix, has the same sort of philosophy as Linux and Unix. And that's all about linking small bits and pieces together to produce more complicated programs. So bash itself has a lot of built-in features. But for anything, it doesn't provide ways to access um, small utility programs to get them out, get the um, result you want out. So my second basic stuff slide is about redirection piping. And this is where this power of linking things together comes from. So you can redirect any output you want to a particular file or append it to a file using this um, chevron and double chevron syn syntax. The linking, linking commands together is using pipes. And most people are probably familiar with this. So here I'm taking the output of the qstack command, which uh, shows the queues on Archer, typing it into grep, which is a command that searches for um, particular strings in the output and only prints the lines where it matches. So this one, this command actually just shows all the jobs that are in a held state in the Archer queues currently. Um, so that's one thing you can do. You can also use a little utility command called T is very useful, especially when you're um, doing complicated builds and things like that, where you want to actually see the output of the screen of what you're actually doing, but also save it to a file in case there's an error where your backline it goes off the top of your screen, you want to be able to look in there and file. There's the T command. So here I'm just piping QStat into the command T, which then saves the output of this file, but also displays um, the output to this terminal as well. So that's a, a sort of two slide summary to um, basic bash scripting. So the trick, you know, now we're on to the sort of the things I find most useful on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of them is doing arithmetic. And so bash has built-in um, ability to do integer arithmetic. And it's very simple. You just use this uh, double parenthesis uh, syntax that's shown here on this line. So I can set the value of the variable meaning of life is 6 times 7 and then echo it back. Okay, That's fine for integer arithmetic, but quite often people want to do floating points in arithmetic. In that case, Bash doesn't have this um, built in. So you have to use an external program to it. And the, probably the most common ones you see people using are ORC, which does a lot more than just floating points arithmetic. Uh, ORC itself would be not so much a webinar in itself to introduce ORC, but possibly a whole four day course in itself to introduce ORC and ORC syntax and the uses of ORC. Um, but it can be used to do uh, floating point arithmetic. So here I'm just using the pipe syntax, so I echo my two variables, pipe them into the org command, and it takes them in the order they came in, and can just do the um, floating point division. Um, and another way you can do it is just by piping it into Python, and essentially writing a pipe, small Python script on the fly. So this is just the Python command to print um, the floating point division. Yeah. So, most of the cases, I, I have to say, I don't use uh, floating point very often in Bash at all. The only reason I might do it 
is if it didn't require writing it. So if I was doing some sort of analysis of price performance and plagiarism, I'd generally resort to writing Python programs, I have to say, um, unless everything I had, I had a bit, I had a script that was in Bash and I wanted to do one or two calculations, then I'd use this sort of trick and you know, to do one or two floating point calculations. Um, but doing integer arithmetic is something you do all the time because as you'll see later, you can use it in for loops and um, you can use it to automatically produce um, parameter sweeps in input files and benchmark, doing benchmarking ones and all these sort of things. So another common thing that uh, people want to do in Bash is manipulate files. So say I've got an input file and I want to define an output file as well, then um, I might want to essentially change the extension of the file. Right? That's quite a common operation. And Bash provides a really neat built-in way of doing this. So if I have a string variable, such as this here, which points to a, um, some sort of file, then I can use this simple um, curly-based syntax to process the name of the variable, the string I'm searching for, and the, the substring I'm searching for, and the substring I want to replace it with. So I do that, it could be out file, I can just change the extension quite easily. And actually this has a huge amount of uses. Um, Bash provides um, a lot of diff actually more subtle ways to use this. So you can look for all matches rather than just the first match, which is what I've done here. And um, you can do it for matching just at the start and matching just at the end. And there's actually other manipulations too, which I haven't co covered here, but it's actually quite a neat syntax for being able to do this sort of string manipulate, common, simple string manipulation very quickly and easily in quite a readable syntax as well. Um, related to that, you can provide default values for variables. This is often used in strings and when manipulating files again. So say I have a variable that may or may not have a value in it and I want to set the value of it um, either to what it was set to beforehand or give it an option to set something if the variable is unset. So I can use this sort of, again, curly based syntax. Instead of the slashes in the middle, I have this colon dash now, and that says if there's something in the initial file, then use that. If not, use the string job1. So if it's unset and I process this to get the in file, I'll get job1.in. Okay? But if I set initial file and then repeat, um, syntax, then I get um, the value of, that was in the variable. And you can see here that I, this is actually just um, allocating a variable. It's got a special syntax, but this is just a variable name here. This thing. So it's the simple expansion that I showed in the very first slides, but maybe slightly modified with this extra syntax to capture um, a default value for the variable. And this is quite becomes in really useful when you don't know if, the, if this variable is going to be set or not at the start of your script. Um, so, for example, when you were doing a sequence of runs and the first one's not set, but the uh, following ones will be, be a really useful way um, to manipulate things. So I realise that this is more just, rather than a sort of a step-by-step -step flowing talk, it's just sort of jumping about into the just essentially a sh one slide or two slides on each feature. But that was what I was aiming for, I think, with this webinar, is just to show um, quickly the bits that I found useful to give you ideas of how you might use them yourself in your own scripts and give you an idea of what's possible in Bash. So one of the other basic things you can do is have for loops. So most people who do any Bash scripting are familiar with this uh, sort of basic form of a for loop in Bash, where you do essentially a for each type of thing. So for each. So I get, create a list, which is just the output of the command ls. So this is a list of files in essentially the current working directory. And then for each item in this list, for each file in this list, I loop over them. And here I'm just echoing them. But if you'd imagine you could do something um, yourself, you could actually do something more substantial, like change the file name, be um, as we did before, or move them to another directory, or add them to a list of things that need to be um, archived or not, depending on some sort of test of what the file name is. So that's pretty standard, and you see that all the time in justice. So not as many people are aware that you can actually use C syntax um, for for loops using essentially the arithmetic uh, double parenthesis operator. So I can just have a loop that goes from one to ten, from zero to nine, sorry, 
in the standard sort of C-like way and just count through the numbers, count through that way. And that can be just as useful, especially if you have, um, if you're using arrays, which we'll see in a minute, where you want to move over every element in the array. So for example, here, I have a quick little fragment of a benchmarking type script. So this is Boosterman's um, a vast benchmark um, on a number of different core counts. So it does your fragment from the job script. So there are all PDS options up here at the top, uh, which I haven't put in. Um, I load the VAS module, so I get the, execute, the VAS executables into my path. If I have a list actually of sizes I want to, use, want to run on, or you could compute this list arithmetically using the arithmetic operators if you wanted. I have result this file. I set an, uh, just a uh, name for an output file. I move to the directory, go to the working directory in PBS, and then for each size in, the size in this list of sizes, I loop over. Um, I loop and do some things. So first of all, I move a file, then I run VASP um, and capture the output, capture standard out somewhere. Then I get the runtime by grepping for a certain string in the output file, echo the size of the job, which was this current size, and the runtime to results file, and save that output file so it doesn't get overwritten in the next one, because VASP uses essentially the same output file names within the directory for each of its outputs. So that's a very simple way that I get all the results of my benchmarking into a ASCII file and two columns, which I could plot very easily to have a look at them, the same as in a GNU plot or a matplotlib or something like that. And I keep the full set of results so that if something goes wrong, I can go back and look and see what the problem was with my one. So that's quite a simple fragment to do some benchmarking. So this is the sort of stuff you use, use on a day-to-day -day basis. If, for example, I install a new version of VASP on the system and I want to check out that it's working as well as the original installation, or I have a new test case and I want to do um, benchmarking without having to want, submit lots of separate jobs and um, manually go through each output file, look at the timing, put it into Excel, plot it, and all these sort of things. It just automates things and actually takes the hassle out of benchmarking, makes benchmarking very simple. Because the first, one of the first things you should do, I guess, when you get on a machine like Archer, is take your code, benchmark it, and find out whether you're running on the right number of calls or not. And if you can take the hassle away from that, that makes it much easier to do um, for people. So the other flow control, as well as the uh, for loop, which you'll see, I guess, another example of later when we talk about arrays, is um, if, else if, else standard sort of a program and construct, and Bash has that with, um, in terms of string comparisons anyway, using just single square brackets. And one thing that often catches people out is you have to have white space on either side of the square brackets to do this. So here we're checking if the value of this variable var is equal to the string one, then we do some, some sort of naughty thing, if it's two, then we do something and then otherwise, um, we don't know the answer, and you can see it finish starts with an F, ends with an FI fine. And you see this quite a lot. This is again the same way that the for each loop. This is very um, standard bash. So, so, but you can also do arithmetic comparisons, um, and again use the double parenthesis rather than um, the square brackets syntax as before. So we can do the, is exactly the same sort of thing. Yeah, analogous sort of thing using if, out if, and curly braces. And although there are other ways of doing this, using the square brackets notation, and you have to remember that you have to use slightly different operators and things like that, so you would for string comparison, this actually makes it a bit clearer uh, about what you do. You know, that it, it's actually a, arithmetic, a sort of arithmetic comparison, in some sense, a number comparison rather than a string comparison. And there are loads of other options with square brackets. You can do file tests as well. And you can test if a file exists. You can test if a file is a directory, or in this case, negate it. So test that a file is not a directory. If a file is not a directory, I might want to do something with it. If it is a directory, I might just want to skip it. Um, and you can test for things like files as standard files and various other bits and pieces. Um, you can also test other particular things about strings, either that a very particular variable has a value, that's the value set, or that it's zero length that's not set. So you might want to say, if it's not set, then you need to do this sort of stuff to compute the value to the in the variable. Otherwise, I'm just going to use the value that's set. So if has a large 
an amount of different options you can use for different types of comparisons on files, strings, and um, numbers. So the other thing I guess I use relatively often is maybe not as widely used in Bash is Bash arrays. So Bash has built-in support for arrays, and you just define them using a single parenthesis in this way. So here I'm defining an array with um, five strings in it, red, green, blue, yellow, and orange. And then I can do various simple operators. So this one here um, gets the length, the current length of the array. It's a bit of a clunky syntax to get the length of the array. Maybe it's a particularly ugly piece of syntax. But actually echoing or printing out or getting using the value of a particular index is sort of what you'd expect from Bash. Um, you just have to use the curly braces to make sure that it knows that this whole part in here is uh, referring to a variable, a particular variable in the array. Adding to the array is very simple, or modifying value. So this one actually appends a value to the array, so I'm appending another one that's pink. And then the length of my array has now increased by one. Okay, um, so all pretty simple. And now you can see where the um, C syntax comes in useful for looping over all the different array, all the different um, values in the array. So here I've defined my array, get the size of it, and now I can just loop over every element in the array, printing out or actually in real life doing something useful um, with the values themselves. Uh, so the other um, useful fragments are how to generate arrays. So there's generally two different ways I think I use commonly to generate the values in the array. Um, one is if I want to get each of the lines in a particular text file into a different array element. And to do this, um, use this slightly strange looking syntax. IFS is a sort of is a, a built-in variable to bash. It specifies the separator um, for the things you're going to be indexing. So in this case, I'm defining the separator as a new line character. Okay, the dollar here is needed to make sure that it interprets it as a special new line character, not as actually literally backslash n. And then what I'm actually doing here, if you break down um, this odd looking syntax here, is the parenthesis, if you remember from the previous slide, is how we defined an array. So the first set of parenthesis is just how we define the array. This dollar parenthesis syntax, if you remember, gets the output from a command. And the command here is actually just redirect the contents of data.txt into standard in. So this other chevron in the other direction is redirecting from standard in into the command. So this is actually just saying, take all of the um, lines that are in data.txt and push them into this um, push them into this command which actually happens to be assigned to an array and set the separator as a new line character so that it um, pick, so each one of them goes into a different array element. The other common thing you would do is from a string of elements separated by spaces. So say you've read a line from a file or you picked pulled the line out of a particular file using ref or some other command, you often have uh, multiple tokens separated by spaces. And you want to say, oh, I want um, the fifth one along. So you can do that quite easily by, um, if you have a line separated by spaces, you can read them into an array called my, my array and just read the contents of that variable into it. Space, the reason I don't need anything with IFS here is because the default separator in bash is essentially white space. But if my string, say I'd read from a comma separated value file, a CSV file instead somehow, or the values that I'd like to push into the array elements are separated by commas, I need to change IFS before I do the read in this one to get all the uh, contents of this string into separate array elements. And then so I, once I've done this, I'd refer to um, my array element zero would give me four um, element two would give me five, and those and such things. So eight arrays can actually be really powerful um, to use in scripts, and actually really useful way of knowing. What's the difference between arrays and lists? So 
So yeah, is asking what's the difference between arrays and lists. I'm not sure. I have to say, I don't. I've always used arrays, so I haven't used lists really. I would have to look that up to answer it. Whether anybody else who's on the webinar knows the answer, or you sort of hear it. I'm not claiming I'm a. Oh, see, sorry, it list. It wasn't actually a list. Okay. So that was here in this um, list here. I just called, this is just a variable called list that contains essentially elements separated by white space. Okay, so when I do uh, for item in list, this is just, this automatically splits um, the values in this uh, variable at white space and works on them. Okay, so that's the equivalent of me, I guess, defining an array separated by spaces and then looping through it in, a, in using array syntax. Actually, because it's such a common operation, this uh, for each syntax does that automatically for you. Sorry, I missed a good question there. Uh, right, so. Okay, so I've only got a couple of um, quick things, I think, left in uh, the actual slides and then I can see if anybody else knows any useful bash things that I, should, I haven't covered here. So one of the most useful things, I think I found this out actually relatively recently, is that there's a printf command in bash. Okay, so actually controlling the formatting of output um, from bash scripts is really easy because most people use the printf syntax um, from originally from C, I think, um, but crops up in a lot of languages now this sort of syntax and actually it's just available as a command in bash so or I guess it's a command in Linux really but I use it in bash so you just provide printf which is the command the first um, argument to printf is the sort of standard formatting statements that you'd have in printf and then the other um, arguments are the variables in the order that they appear in printf and this makes producing um, Plotable output or readable output from bash scripts very simple indeed. Okay, so that's just a quick one. The other useful command I use again, this isn't particularly a bash thing so much, although I think of it as bash because I use it in bash scripts a lot, is exargs, which is um, a special command that allows you to run commands on multiple results from another command. So that's a bit, it's quite convoluted to explain using words. But well, essentially, say you have a um, command you run that produces a list or are multiple uh, results, and you want to do something with each of the results. So the really common usage is what you see here. So I've got a find command that's going from the current directory looking for all files that are, have um, this sort of structure that are called dot .res, that have dot .res on the end of them, and they're of regular files. And all I do is print out the name of these files as I found them. And then I type it into exargs, which then moves these files um, into a directory on, in my case, on the RDF called results files. So actually what I'm doing is looking for every file in the uh, directory tree and moving them one by one into um, a particular um, directory. There are a few arguments that need explaining here. Uh, Print zero, print the file name for all by an ASCII norm. That makes it very easy for um, exargs to split them up. Exargs option minus zero um, deals correctly with spaces. I'm going to have to type it there on the slide. Deals correctly with spaces and file names. So if there's space and file names, which isn't particularly common on Linux systems, but does happen, then you can deal with them properly by adding um, minus zero. The minus i indicator says what string should I use to represent the value the argument that I'm being passed from the previous command. So in this case, I said use double curly braces. So this bit here um, will be replaced by each of the outputs you find in turn um, to move it across. So this is a really useful file manipulation data management for building up archives, uh, passing things into tarps or archives and then move across, stuff like that. Um, the syntax takes possibly a little bit of getting used to and a bit of playing around with, but is a really useful command and I think exploring the use of exargs if you've got to do any data manipulation you don't already use it is um, well worth investing some time 
into exploring it. So I said at the end, I have a very um, quick example that sort of shows the sort of things that I use it for. So here I've got parameter sweep script. So quite often in calculations, I want to do some sort of ensemble simulation or some sort of parameter sweep where I work through um, a set of calculations in turn, um, running them and getting the results back and processing them somehow. So in this case, and the there might be particular characteristics of the different calculations, and um, so they might have different names, they might use different numbers of cores, they might have um, particular values of input parameters that I want to um, use on the fly, that I want to replace on the fly, all these sort of things. This is a very simple example. All I'm going to do here is set up a script that can read from a text file uh, these two columns. This is the name of the calculation and the number of cores it should run on. Um, the name of the calculation will also correspond to a subdirectory where the input files of that calculation have already been preloaded. Okay, so they're all in there waiting to run. But you could just as easily uh, make this with a bit of work, make this script actually write the input files itself on the fly rather than just um, using the stuff that's been pre-settled. Anyway, so that's the file I'm going to be reading in with just these three lines in this case. Um, and I'm going to try and run calculations. And once again, it's VAST because I do all, tend to do a lot of stuff with VAST from Archer. So it's quite to use. And actually, it always feels, feels like a good example because lots of people use VAST from Archer. So again, PBS options. Again, module load VAST. I set a variable that indicates where my list of jobs is. That contains those lines that I had on the previous slide. Again, I set a results file. Again, I shift. Again, um, I set a root directory, which is the working directory from which I launched the job. Okay, so all my uh, individual calculations are in subdirectories of the root directory from where I submitted the job. So I use um, the syntax I showed before to pull each of the lines from the file into an array called job array. I then loop over each item in this job array. And then for each item, each line in the job array, I again pull the contents of that into another array, which is essentially called tokens, which are the, just the um, separated by white space, the name of the calculation, and the number of cores. I move to a directory that are with the name of the calculation, run my VASP calculation on the right number of cores, and um, store it in a standout file given by the job name. Okay. And I put ampersand on the end here because actually I'm going to run all these separate VASP calculations in parallel because they're independent to each other. So rather than running them in turn, I'm going to submit a job that asks for enough calls to run all three of the jobs and run them all in the same, uh, run them all in parallel. That's what the ampersand does here. Put the EPD into the background, so that one starts, and then we go to the next one, start that, next one, start that. And at the end, I just wait. And that tells me, tells the script to wait until all these AP run commands are finished. Once they've all finished, I can then go with my loop again. And this time, instead of running the calculations, what I'm going to do is go and pull the energies out of the output file, the VASP output file. Um, read, and then because I know the line is separated by spaces, and I know which token on that line and corresponds to my total energy, I can then print out using printf um, the name of the job and the total energy from the calculation to my results file. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once this job finishes, hopefully if all the jobs run, all the calculations run successfully, I will end up with um, three subdirectories with all the results in from the jobs and a results file um, summarizing the total energy in each of the um, calculations that, I've that I can then use um, to do further analysis. Actually, the results file is generally used just to give me an idea that everything's been correctly, the energies look reasonable, um, and that everything's sensible. And this is a really simple example, but you can imagine how you could make this um, more complicated and more useful in some ways. So you could, for example, as well as pulling out the output, you could say, okay, if this output's verified as being um, within tolerance, then I don't need to keep the full output and check it. I can just um, combine it all into a tar archive and push it to the RDF for storage. Um, 
in case I need to go back and look at it another time. And then once I've verified that that move has happened correctly and all the files are archived and the archives viable, I can move the files from work, free up more space for further calculations in the future. So I can automatically shuffle files around and do some file management at the end of my job as well. So um, quite quickly, you can build up Power Scripts. And of course, not everything has to be kept in a script like this. I could take this fragment and move it out into a little subscript. So rather than typing out every time, I could um, have a library of functions that I could call um, from Bash um, that did these common operations. And that's generally, and that's often what you do rather than use it for a one so. so in summary, it's been a bit of a whirlwind tour of bits and pieces I found useful. I find Bash scripting really powerful and really useful. It has some advantages uh, for file manipulation in particular over things like um, Python, where operations on moving files around aren't so, aren't so natural, and operations on files aren't natural. So if you need to do things with files, with loops, and repeat things, then I found Bash would be more useful than Python. And Python obviously has its, use, its particular use case as well, which I use a lot. It has a large number of useful features built in. You may or may not be aware of. There's a huge amount of stuff in there. And as I say, I'm not really a Bash expert. These are just the things that I find useful on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a huge amount of other stuff out there. Um, particularly uses of Archer, I used before ensemble jobs, benchmarking runs, um, collating results from multiple jobs automatically, and file and data management, as I mentioned. Um, so if you ever want further information, one of the best resources on the web um, which you may have come across if you've ever Googled for anything to do with Bash, is the Advanced Bash Scripting Guide. And there's a URL here, but if you just Google for Advanced Bash Scripting Guide, or actually any sort of Bash kind, you'll find it's pretty high up the um, hit list in Google. So um, with that, I think I'm going to shut up because I'm finished. Um, so if anyone has any questions or any um, tips of their own, please feel free to share them and um, I'll try and answer the questions as best I can, but like I say, I'm not an expert. So I can see a few people typing in those, so I'm just giving them a chance for those questions to appear. Yeah, yeah, so you can also use seek x, y. So there's a command in Linux essentially produces a sequence of numbers, and it's an alternative way, I guess, to looping over um, arrays and things like that, other than the syntax I showed with the sort of integer C style uh, function, but yeah. Yeah, and Fiona says that you can use back ticks as well to assign a bash variable. Yeah, so that's always been in um, from just from, from Born Shell as well. Um, the equivalent I, I showed them, it's exactly the equivalent um, thing I showed here is right at the start, which was in the variables here. Um, it sounds as a command. So this dollar parenthesis is entirely equivalent to backticks. And a lot of people use backticks and no backticks well. Yes, there's that as well. And actually, I think I find it more readable than the back ticks as well. Uh, Mike M is, did the, is asking, I, uh, I did uh, three AP runs concurrently, and how do the core allocations work out? Does AP run manage that for you? So yes, so if I ask for the right number of total nodes for my three calculations, then, you c then if you just ask for your, if you just background the AP runs, it will automatically make sure that they don't overlap and use um, separate compute nodes for that. And actually, if you keep using the ampersand, it will, and try to exceed your reservation, it'll just tell you that you're trying to exceed your reservation and crash, I think. But I haven't tested that. It might be that you can actually just keep queuing them up and as they become free, it'll reuse them. I'd have to double check. Yeah, so, David's asking in the array example that I did array 6 equals pink instead of array 5 equals pink, which was the next sequence in the array. Would the array length be 7 and array 5 undefined? 
yes, that's exactly what would happen. So the array length would be seven because it knows it goes up to index, it goes from zero to six, and um, array find five would be undefined. That's my understanding of it anyway. Okay, thanks, David. So if David said that Adrian will ask like a MIDI schedule and schedules your jobs within the node allocation, does that mean if I keep adding ampersands, even if there aren't any no more nodes available, it will just queue them up and try to run them as long as things finish within the uh, defined wall time? Okay, so it is cleverer than I was giving it credit for. Thanks, David. Yes, sorry, Benjamin, I missed that one. The um, capturing large amounts of output um, using EOF, so um, having, uh, for example, uh, sorry, large amounts of input using EOF. So you can also, I didn't have a slide on that, and that was one thing maybe I should have added in, is that you can, within Bash, use an indicator such as the double chevron EOF that uh, Benjamin showed there to capture multiple lines of input into a um, single uh, variable in Bash. I'll add a slide on that. Um, to the presentation um, when I, and we upload it to the uh, website, so that's on the list as well, even though it's not going to be in the, present the recorded presentation. Yeah, so that's, a, yes, so you can have, so if you do want to submit multiple job scripts rather than having everything in one job script, and there are perfectly valid reasons to do that, as Fiona says there, you can use a bash script to also generate your uh, job submission scripts, particularly using this sort of uh, double chevron EOF or whatever string you want um, to put to sort of also generate um, job submission scripts with different bits and pieces in. And you need to backslash before the dollar the variables when you do that to make sure they're evaluated properly by the uh, by bash. So can I add an example of that to the bash script and to the uh, slides and we upload them to the website? I'll see if anybody else is typing. Okay, so something about aliases as well. I mean, maybe there's actually something here, um, rather than just having this as the webinar, is repeating this but as a sort of a screencast demonstrating the different things, actually with a terminal in front of me and showing the different bits and pieces, and then it could be uploaded to YouTube and put on the actual website with the other screencasts is the way to go then. Because there's quite a few interesting things that people are adding at the end here, which is what I, would, I hoped would happen because there's always more to learn about this sort of stuff. So I'll take these suggestions and maybe try and record a screencast that shows these things actually in action. So it's hard to describe them in words sometimes, but actually um, easier just to show them being used in practice. So has anybody got any other questions or comments or suggestions? Uh, before we finish off.
great. Well, I'm, fi I'm glad that people find it useful. That's the whole point of doing these things. I find them useful. Mm -hmm. I thought if I find them useful, then they're useful things to share for other people. Command line argument example as well. Okay, yeah. So running a script that takes uh, command line arguments and actually manipulating them and using them in some way. That's a good suggestion as well, Mike. Okay, I can't see anybody else typing at the moment, so I'm sort of assuming that means that everybody's either happy or finished, in which case I will stop here. Thank you all for coming along. These things that we work if there's actually an audience to uh, talk to and get feedback from as well. So thank you for your time, and I'm glad somebody, at least some of you have found it useful.